Hey everybody, I hope you guys are out there and safe. So this is the Xiaomi Pad 6S 12.4 Pro. Yeah, the name is way too clunky. They really need to clean it up. But this is Xiaomi's new flagship tablet. It's going to be a little bit pricey for some parts of the world, but in Asia, in Hong Kong, and China, it's quite a good deal. And I think this is a really good alternative to someone who don't want to use an iPad or a Samsung tablet. So what's new with this tablet over the Xiaomi Pad 6 that I reviewed six months ago? Well, as the name implies, it has a larger 12.4 inch screen. So this is a 3K resolution panel, 144 Hertz refresh rate, LCD panel though, not an OLED, but it gets up to 900 nits of maximum brightness, which is really bright for a tablet. The bezels around it are relatively thin and you have a 32 megapixel webcam selfie camera right here. Unfortunately, it only shoots at 1080p though, so no 4K. Okay, so this is front-facing camera footage. It matches out at 1080p though. How do I sound? How do I look? Around the back, you have an aluminum unibody design. Come in this kind of flat, boxy design language that I already know a lot of you guys are going to say, it looks just like an iPad. But there's only so many ways you can do a tablet. I think this design also looks like a Xiaomi 13 or a Xiaomi 14, especially with this boxy square camera module. But don't be fooled by this relatively bulky camera module. You really just have one camera here, a 50 megapixel main camera that does an okay job for a tablet. The secondary lens is a two megapixel depth sensor that doesn't really do anything. I'm gonna say that until the end of time. These two megapixel sensors they are kind of pointless. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this screen is now in a three by two aspect ratio instead of the widescreen 16 by nine. Some people are gonna like 16 by nine more if you watch a lot of movies, but I like three by two more because it gives you more vertical room to work if you're trying to read or write text. And you will want to write on this guy because you have an option to buy a really well-made keyboard case. If you have watched my videos on tablets, I feel like nowadays tablets need to be paired with a keyboard case to justify its existence. Because otherwise, if you're just using this as a handheld device to read articles and watch movies, you might as well just get a foldable phone. It's more actually more comfortable to hold sitting on a sofa, like an 8-inch screen, than a large-ish tablet. So to, in my opinion, when you have a tablet of this size, you really need to use it with the keyboard case. Unfortunately, this is a separate purchase. So let's talk pricing. So this guy, just a tablet by itself with 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. It sells in China for about the equivalent of 550 US dollars. But in Europe, it gets marked up a little bit to 700 Euro, which is like 730 US dollars. And then this keyboard case, along with a stylus that it's not super necessary, but it's nice to have. These two in China, they're about 100 US dollars each. But in Europe, again, it's a little bit more and then combined, they're like 250 euros. Back to the hardware, the volume rockers on the top or right side of the tablet, it's very clicky. The power button doubles as a fingerprint sensor and you have a six speaker setup symmetrical on the left and right side and it pumps up very loud audio. It also supports Dolby Atmos sound. <laughs> There are also four microphones to help you with video calls. So inside is a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, which is a flagship chip of 2023. So that means even right now, the chip is pretty capable, but it's only paired with eight gigs of RAM. And I do find that when I have a lot of apps open, the apps in the back will like take an extra second to load. But the 256 gigs of storage is UFS 4.0. There's a 10,000 mAh battery in there that can be charged on 120 watt with the included charging brick. The device is relatively lightweight. Xiaomi advertises 590 grams for the weight, that's 1.3 pounds, but I took it to the kitchen scale and actually came out at 598 grams. And if you're wondering, the whole package with tablet, keyboard case, and the stylus comes out to a little bit over 1,100 grams, which is about 2.4 pounds, so still lighter than a laptop. Let's look at this uh, keyboard case. You attach it to the back fire, the magnetic pogo pin. Then you have a kickstand here with a hinge that's pretty sturdy and it allows you to prop up the tablet at various angles. This style is officially called the Xiaomi Focus Pen. Attaches to the top of the tablet and charges wirelessly. The keyboard itself, the keys are great. They're evenly spaced. There's relatively good amount of travel. I want to say close to one millimeter of travel. But this trackpad is very jumpy. When I move the cursor around, 
sometimes I'm like missing the target even if I'm going quite slowly. And it's not because the trackpad is small, because on iPad, the trackpad is like the same size, but the cursor on iPad OS is like perfect every time. So if this is like a software issues, the cursor here is just a little bit slippery. This stylus is quite good as a drawing or writing tool. It recognizes over 8,000 levels of pressures. Palm rejection algorithm is good. So you can see here, I'm sketching, I'm writing notes and it's fine. Also, Xiaomi software, can detect your handwriting and convert it to text. And it works for English and Chinese too. Works pretty well for my testing. You can also use the stylus as a laser pointer by pressing a button and pointing at the screen. So this is the first tablet to run on Xiaomi's Hyper OS. This is Xiaomi's new all-in-one software that's designed to run on all of Xiaomi's products from its phones to tablets to smartwatches to Xiaomi's electric vehicle. Hyper OS is clean and minimal. It takes up less space than MIUI, and it plays very nice if you already have a Xiaomi phone, well, a new Xiaomi phone running Hyper OS. So right here in the upper right corner, it's an NFC pad. If you tap the Xiaomi 14 Ultra on the upper right corner, it will sync the phone. And then from there, you can see your Xiaomi 14 Ultra phone screen on the tablet, and you can control the phone screen with the tablet or control the tablet with your phone and then you can even drag and drop files over. I do find that the latency isn't quite as flawless as Huawei setup, because Huawei ecosystem can do the same thing. But on Huawei, I find that there's like almost no perceivable lag. But here, I do see a lag here and there. But hey, the software is still young. Maybe Xiaomi will optimize that in the future. Hyper OS has really fluid animations and you can run just about most apps in either split screen or floating window mode. However, two of my biggest complaints of Chinese foldables are unfortunately here. So the number one is when you watch YouTube in split screen mode, you can only split it vertically, not horizontally. Number two is Gboard. Even when you have Gboard on a tablet screen this big, will take up the entire bottom of the screen. It doesn't split. Performance is mostly fine with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I can play games on this, watch YouTube on this perfectly fine. I'm not going to edit videos on this tablet, but if you want to edit videos, Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is capable enough to handle video editing. But with only 8 gigs of RAM and a very slippery trackpad, I personally don't want to do that. Battery life is also really good. If you're just using this as a productivity machine, like writing words, reading emails, social media, maybe doing some video calls and listening to Spotify, this guy can last you a full eight hour workday with over 20% left of battery to spare. Overall, I think the Xiaomi Pad 6S 12.4 Pro is a very polished and well-made tablet. And I think if you're a fan of Xiaomi products, if you already use a Xiaomi phone, this guy fits very nicely into that ecosystem. To be able to pair your Xiaomi phone with the tablet just makes your workflow a little bit easier. However, I think the price of this guy in Europe may be a little bit too high. Because basically, like I said, it's over 900 euro for the whole kit. And I think at that price, there's Apple's iPad, which has a much better app ecosystem. And that's not really Xiaomi's fault. That's just iOS apps are better than Android apps, especially for tablets. So iPad has a much better ecosystem and Apple Silicon, it's better than Qualcomm Silicon. Like that's another thing that's out of Xiaomi's control. Apple is just leading the areas there. And I want to clarify, I'm not even one of those guys who usually complain about Xiaomi prices in Europe. For example, I know a lot of Europeans think this phone is expensive in Europe too, but I actually don't agree because I think this guy is better than the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And I think Android is much closer to iOS on the phone side than on the tablet side. So like the app issues is not a big deal here. And this guy has a much better camera than iPhone camera. So I think the Europeans who are complaining are being unfair because this is the best phone hardware on the market right now. Why shouldn't it be priced higher? But for the tablet, this is not the best tablet hardware. The iPad Pro is still a better tablet. Now I think the iPad Pro is gonna be a little bit pricier if you add on the keyboard and all that, but it does give you a better experience at just a little bit more money. So when it comes to the tablet in Europe, I think the price is a little bit too high, but in Asia, I think it's a good price. So yeah, that's about it for this review of the Xiaomi Pad 6S 12.4 Pro. The name is too long. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. It would help me a lot. Thanks for watching.